Get ready to have the hair on the back of your neck stand on end. These videos are among the most chilling we've ever seen. Mysteries in the forms of novels, movies, and even campfire tales are often consumed by people around the world who love the adrenaline rush of solving them. However, some of the most pervasive mysteries are those that occur in real life, and these are the ones that seem to be the most difficult to figure out. But we wouldn't have it any other way. 15 Unexplained Mysteries That Need Explaining The Rock of Al Nazla. After looking at this rock, you'd be forgiven for thinking some artist came out with a laser and sliced this rock in half. Believe me when I say it's cut as natural as the rock itself. That doesn't make it any less remarkable. In fact, quite the opposite. Researchers are baffled at the mathematically precise cut running through the middle, not to mention the levitating aesthetic. According to scientists, the rock dates to ancient times and has taken centuries to acquire its unique shape and famous cut. While Al Nasla is undoubtedly unique, it isn't the only rock in the area that features such unique appearances. The limestone, shell, and sandstone present are some of the oldest on the earth, having undergone the most prolonged erosion and weather stripping of anywhere else on the planet. Though experts are still deducing how the laser precise cut came to be, they suspect there was once flowing water through a crevice, slowly etching away the stone until eventually it made its way all the way through and gave us this fantastic rock. It would also explain the small slates of rock, the feet, that hold these massive stones with magical balance. Will they ever fall, or will they continue to stand the test of time on Earth's remaining lifespan? Only time will tell. A more plausible theory is that movement in the ground below triggered the split. Fasten your seatbelts, because it's time for today's sweet topic. What scientists found inside this place shocked the whole world. How could it not? It looks like a bunch of skinless human bodies laid out on stretchers. And although there are only four bodies seen in the shocking image, there are a lot more stretchers, which means there could be even more bodies. And it looks like something out of a horror movie. It's very possible that this is the site where corpses are experimented on. Don't freak out. This is actually a common practice. In the US, about 20,000 people or their families donate their bodies to scientific research and education each year. They do it because they want to make their deaths meaningful in a different way or because they're disenchanted with the traditional death industry. Specimens are procured for medical research, surgical training, and education programs. The process is strictly regulated by the government and the parties involved follow a specific set of rules every step of the way. A lot can be learned from the human body, dead or alive. On the other hand, are these corpses even human? If you notice the toes of the body closest to the left-hand side, it only has three toes. Just saying. What's your hypothesis? Your comments are needed below using hashtag sweet topic. The Mystery of Shell Grotto In 1835, in Southeast England, a resident was digging a pond when he came across a startling discovery. He had discovered an empty space below the ground's surface that seemed to be much larger than his newly added hole. Upon deeper investigation, he stumbled into an incredible underground palace adorned with treasures and shells from the sea. Today, the grotto is known as the Margate Shell Grotto. The 104-foot-long passage and large altar room at the end are covered head to toe in mosaics made from seashells and bones. Experts suspect the whopping 4.6 million shells were used to ornament the 2,000 square feet of space and were arranged in decorative patterns suspected of honoring the dead. The craftsmanship is astounding and shows that even our forebears had more ability than we presumed. That wonderful underground fairyland at the Dane. Its origin has never been definitely fixed. The Eileen Moore Lighthouse Mystery We can never get enough old sailor mystery tales, can we? It all started in the 1900s when a small ship made its way to the Flannan Islands in the remote Outer Hebrides. Its destination, the lighthouse Eileen Moore, was located on a remote island known to be completely uninhabited, save for the few keepers of the lighthouse and birds resting on their migratory journey. To this day, researchers are baffled at the strange occurrences taking place there, and there are varied tales filtered through the grapevine enough to branch off into conflicting tales. The island, named after St. Flannan, who built a chapel on its untold number of years ago, is feared by most locals. For centuries, shepherds used the island for grazing but would always leave before sunset for fear of what might come during the night. They were fearful of spirits that might haunt the island in their words. 
Once at the lighthouse, the small ship stopping for port recognized something was eerily wrong. The door to the lighthouse was unlocked, wide open and flapping in the wind. The captain continued searching for the residents throughout the house, where he found half-eaten food and an overturned furniture. From the captain's perspective, it seemed the residents left in a hurry, with a fight and under duress. It was like something straight out of a horror movie. Adding to the strangeness of the scene, all the clocks in the home stopped ticking at the same time. He continued his search to no avail. The lighthouse tenders had seemingly vanished. Where could they have gone? After returning to the ship to inform the crew of their situation, they launched a massive search of the island and surrounding islands for remains or even a sign of the keepers. This was the keeper's livelihood and home. Why abandon it with such haste? According to the captain, the keepers were a dedicated family who'd never just up and leave their duties unfulfilled. That is, unless something spooked them. Petri was asked what he thought had happened so many years earlier. <laughs> the anchorage groaning. It came in bursts, growing louder, then fading out into eventual stillness. It was heard all over. People miles apart reported the same sound and at about the same time, when considered how sound travels. The mysterious groaning has been happening in Anchorage for years, but only in the past few has it grown with such intensity. Experts still have no clue what's causing the sound, but are feverishly trying to uncover the secret. Eventually, as all unexplained mysteries do, it caught the attention of an eclectic group of people wanting to believe the sound was caused by the paranormal. Whenever there's no explanation, there are those insisting on a logical explanation and those consumed by the fun of the unknown. When both are present, the story typically hits legendary status as the Anchorage Groaning has. Harold Holt's Disappearance it was a typical Sunday morning in December when Harold Holt opted to partake in his most beloved passions. Harold, who was Australia's 17th Prime Minister at the time, set off on a journey of navigating a tarmac road bordered by Muna trees all the way to the entrance of Cheviot Beach. It was his preferred location. Known as an experienced spearman and swimmer who famously practiced holding his breath while conducting parliamentary duties, Harold couldn't be too far from the water. Those who worked with him said he was constantly training for a swim and reveling in his advancement. On his last swimming adventure, those who went with him said it was like the waters just swallowed him up and he never returned. To make matters worse, Australia was left leadless and during the Cold War of all times, the massive search that ensued after would go down in history as Australia's most prominent ever. No findings or evidence of his disappearance have surfaced to this day. <laughs> The Aerial School Alien Encounter It's only a matter of time before our technology catches up to those pesky UFOs. One day, someone somewhere will snap a clear photo. That is, unless the UFOs destroy us once that happens. Those speeding objects can only move up to so fast before the camera captures them. Talking about UFOs in this day is trudging through a well-beaten path and typically falls upon deaf ears. From movies to conspiracy theories, aliens have been the subject of human tales for as long as we can remember. The key here is the word unidentified. Once it is identified, it's no longer a UFO. Imagine the surprise from the world when a hundred children witness the UFO for themselves and all have the same eyewitness facts. At the time, the kids were skeptical, as any child would be at the unknown. It's what humans do when we don't understand something. In fact, they hadn't mentioned the incident for over 50 years, well into their adult life, and after evidence surfaced of what it could have been. Now, the recount from all the students tells of a mysterious object that they all shared. Through the years of speculation, there's been one specific piece of evidence that's been greatly overlooked. American physicist Dr. James E. McDonald, known for his extensive research on UFOs, interviewed a science teacher from the school who witnessed the event firsthand and was the only adult to have done so. In the interview, McDonald described their meeting as eerie. He said this later of the interviewee, he told me the UFO was first brought to his attention by a hysterical child who ran into his classroom and told him there's a flying ship outside. Thinking it was just part of some game or imagination, the teacher followed the child to find a group of hundred or so children staring and pointing in the same direction. What I thought was maybe the world was going to end, maybe they were telling us the world was going to end. The Circleville Letters There are some disgusting human beings in this world, plain and simple. An anonymous perp leaving letters harassing a young girl is enough to terrify any parent and classify the perp as despicable. 
Gillespie, a school bus driver, had just finished her route of dropping kids off at school and was headed home when she discovered a heinous message. It had been placed along her daily bus route. With no kids to worry about on the bus, she pulled over to the side of the road to get a closer look at the sign. The sign, which read words that will not be repeated here, made obscene remarks about Gillespie's young daughter. The perp wanted Gillespie to find it. For months before the sign was planted, an anonymous person started sending letters to their house, remarking in a similar, profane way aimed at her and her daughter. The scariest part of the whole situation is when she exited the bus to take down the sign, a small box containing a 25 caliber bullet had fallen out. Could this be a threat to their lives? The mom certainly had reason to believe so and reported it to the authorities. She knew the sign was the work of the same anonymous perp sending her letter by the tone of the harassment. In the letters, the person had warned her that messages would be posted publicly proving a supposed affair Gillespie was having. The scariest part? After police arrived on the scene to investigate, they learned that it was once rigged for a gun to go off after the sign was torn down in anger. The perp had suspected Gillespie would tear down the sign in anger, triggering the trap. This was a murder attempt, and police had no way of telling who was after them. The heck is going on in this world? The first letter was directed at the mother, which stated, I know where you live. I've been observing your house and know you have children. This is no joke. Please take it serious. Well, at least we know the intelligence level of the perp since they can't even use proper grammar. Maybe the perp should spend their time on schooling instead of threatening people. Just a thought. <coughs> Lars Matank This might be YouTube's most famous missing persons case. In 2014, Lars Matank, a 28-year-old German citizen, traveled with his friends to a resort on the Black Sea coast in Bulgaria for a summer vacation. What was supposed to be a week of fun and pleasantry turned into nightmare. The day before Lars and his friends were supposed to fly back home, he got into a fight and suffered an eardrum rupture. He then left his friends at the bar and disappeared for the evening. He showed up the following day claiming that the guys he fought with at the bar had, after the initial fight, hired four men to beat him up the night before. It's uncertain whether he received the eardrum injury in the first fight or after his supposed jumping. When he went to see a doctor, they prescribed him Cefprozo, a strong antibiotic, and advised him not to fly due to the sensitivity of the injury. The pain he would ensue at high altitudes would be severe. He was only a day away from returning home, and he had weeks before he could safely fly again. Lars's friends wanted to stay with him and fly out together when it was safe for him to travel, but he turned them down, sending them on their way and back to their lives. Saying he was going to be okay on his own, his friends obliged. One friend later reported that he seemed in a good mood and relaxed when they left. Checking out of the resort and into a much cheaper resort, Lars left a paper trail of his movements. From the moment Lars got into the hotel, things started getting bizarre. The CCTV footage from the hotel shows him pacing up and down a foyer, reminiscent of someone frightened and paranoid. He was looking out the windows and even hid in a lift. Something was clearly going on in his head that we don't see here. Was he threatened? Had he received brain damage? His mother later reported that he called her and whispered four men were following him and trying to murder him and that she should cancel all his bank cards for him. He arrived at the airport the next day and checked into the doctor, who told him if he decides to fly, the injury could kill him. He feared something more than the flight, however. While still in the examination room, a construction worker entered and sent Lars into a frenzy. He darts off in haste, running away from the airport terminal, passing through boarding gates and check-in zones to get outside of the building. He left all of his belongings behind, including his wallet and passport. It will be the last time anyone ever sees or hears from him ever again. <laughs> what happened to Mary Celeste? A sunken ship with untold secrets, a crew gone mysteriously missing, all facets to create one of the most mysterious occurrences of all time. It sounds like the adventure and discovery of a lifetime, right up there for all you Indiana Jones folks out there. From the mysterious charting path chosen and recorded by the captain to the chronometer that read eight seconds slow upon discovery, the mystery of Mary Celeste is as far as it is wide. Researchers are unsure about the Mary Celeste disaster and the fateful night that brought her and her crew to Davy Jones's locker. The last marked location on its sea charts pointed in that direction of the northern side of the St. Maria Island, specifically to the side held as the most dangerous for its crushing waves and jagged rocks sharp enough to saw through a ship's hull with ease. You may all be asking, it's not a mystery why he crashed then, which would be a logical method of thinking, but the truth of the matter is that the north side of St. Maria Island was infamous for its dangerous shores even during the Mary Celeste voyage. The captain would have indeed been aware of the danger his pathing imposed. 
one must consider if the dangerous crashing shores of the northern side of St. Maria Island seemed a safer choice than whatever mysterious danger forced the rash decision by an experienced sea captain must have been extensive. Long Island Missing Persons Posters If this doesn't get converted to a movie soon, someone needs to pick it up. It screams the Blair Witch Project tone. A hiker traveling through the woods near New York revealed a terrifying discovery a trail of a dozen missing persons posters, all the same individuals. Curious as a cat, the hiker followed the posters like breadcrumbs, which led to the most troubling aspect of all, a makeshift cage made of thick wooden sticks. If you're wondering who the heck does something like this, you ain't alone. There were also cans of food, torn clothes, and a dirty blanket inside the cage. The scene was straight out of a horror film, to say the least. At this point, the hiker says he was flooded with fears and ran from the site with a speed he didn't know he had, faster and longer than he had ever thought he could muster. He ran straight to the nearest police station, where he reported the sighting to Suffolk County Police. After an investigation, authorities concluded that the site was set up by a nearby resident for their Halloween bash. It was confirmed by the individual who created the theme. Still, you must watch where you put these types of displays, especially on public grounds. I'd have done the same thing if I came across such a site. Who wouldn't? The Benjamin Kyle Mystery Losing your mind and or memories is one of the most haunting aspects of human disease. No one wants to forget everything from their family down to how to breathe. Going from knowing to not knowing the people in the room can be a traumatic thing, though you might not ever remember it. There is some strange comfort in ignorance too. Benjamin Kyle suffered from amnesia for years before he first went missing. Even more miraculously, he finally found his way home after years of not knowing he wasn't home. Benjamin was discovered malnourished, naked, covered in fire ants and unresponsive in 2004 by a local Burger King dumpster. Authorities were called and he was taken into care, where he was then released back into the wild. Since he had seen and had no family that he knew of, no one was called. I say wild because it was up to Benjamin to discover what to do next with no road from the past to help guide his steps. He decided to try and learn of them with no link to his family, if they ever existed. Nearly 11 years after his near death, he finally assembled the puzzle and discovered who he and his family are. A team of experts helped sequence Kyle's DNA over the years to look for potential candidates. They even went as far to ask the community to share their DNA to help him. So many people turned up that they eventually found a match. Incredible. North Korean Ghost Ships For years, no one could solve why dozens of battered wooden ghost ships, often accompanied by corpses of North Korean fishermen whose starved remains were reduced to skeletons, were routinely washing ashore along the coast of Japan. A recent study into the matter has revealed what researchers now say is the most likely explanation. While still horrifyingly inhumane, it isn't as scary as most originally believed. The truth is that China is sending a hidden fleet of industrial boats to illegally fish in North Korean waters. The smaller fishermen are forced out by the massive ships, eventually leading to a decline in a once abundant aquatic stock of more than 70%. The North Korean fishermen washing up in Japan apparently venture too far from shore, searching for fish in deeper waters. Unable to navigate the deep seas, these little fishermen end up stranded and eventually passing away. These are the infamous ghost ships of North Korea. The Tao's Hum There is a sound so loud and so constant that it can be heard around the globe with proper instruments, of course. Your brain may have drowned out its pitch, but it's here. This mysterious force is known as the Tao's Hum and has been worshipped by ancient civilizations since written history. In precise locations, the sound is so prevalent and loud that it can disrupt resonance and technology. While most humans can't hear it, some are remarkably tuned to its song. The classic description of its sound is that it sounds like a truck engine idling. For some, it's a distant rumbling and thundering storm in the distance. It can start and stop as suddenly as the flip of a switch. For some, the sound is so intrusive that they can't live in certain areas or be subjected to the constant pestering of the hum. Those that can hear the hum have been called hum hearers by researchers. A fellow hearer and geoscientist discovered the hum in 1980. The first reported hearing in the United States occurred in the late 80s in Taos, New Mexico. As if there aren't enough paranormal things going on in that state already. Geologists believe the sound to be the work of magnetism and the shifting of tectonic plates. The Saddle Ridge Gold Man, if only I couldn't stumble across a Spanish hoard of gold coins. The Northern Californian couple who stumbled upon a small fortune on their property, 
ten million dollars worth of gold coins could have broken California law in doing so. Once the stash was discovered, the couple failed to report their stunning discovery, but alas, it emerged in their reluctance. Loose lips sink ships, people. To be fair, I'd be hesitant to announce such a large amount of money to the world as well, especially without all the security to protect it. While the government enacted tax laws on the couple, they did allow them to remain anonymous for this exact reason. Death and taxes, people, death and taxes. The pair discovered the hall in gold country while out walking the family dog. They tripped, literally, across 1,427 mint condition gold coins, all dating from 1847 to 1894. The Spanish gold galleons were buried in the shadow of an old tree that a violent storm recently unearthed. They have so far managed to remain anonymous despite worldwide media attention. The Havana Sonic Attacks The U.S. Embassy in Havana halved its staff in 2017 when diplomats started complaining of headaches, nausea, and other strange ailments. The side effects occurring only after a strange, penetrating noise was heard in the area. Was it a cyber attack? A chemical weapon? One of some unknown origin? At that time, experts and health professionals were confused. Some are skeptical of the answer today. The mysterious wave of sickness fueled a massive conspiracy theory that the embassy and the workers were targeted with some sort of super high acoustic weapon. It was so nauseating and crippling to many that most couldn't do their jobs. The theory gained steam when an audio recording of the strange sounds was released for the world to hear. The high-pitched squeal picked up by the microphones of a surveilling drone is nothing short of eerie. After further investigation, they discovered the sound wasn't of human origin. It was revealed to be the song of the Indies' short-tailed cricket gathering in mass not too far from the embassy. Their songs were so loud, so heavy that they altered humans' equilibrium in the eardrum, causing spells of illness to wash over many. As we explain some mysteries of the past, new ones open for the future. It's the never-ending cycle of learning and science. It's important to remember that when things can't be explained, our brain races to solve it with the possibility no matter how wild in theory those thoughts might be. For some, the thought of the unknown is just unbearable. If you enjoyed the video, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe to get all our lit content delivered right to your inbox.